Hi, I'm Grace Grogan. As full-time travelers throughout the United States and Canada, Paul Cannon and I love seeking out unique places to visit and photograph. Today we are taking you to Moscow Island in New Brunswick, Canada. Moscow means low wetlands and got its name from the Mi'kmaq First Nations people who used to fish and hunt on the island long before it was discovered by Jacques Cartier in 1534. The 2016 census showed 530 people living on the island. Moscow Island is located on the northeastern tip of New Brunswick between Chawlers Bay and the Gulf of St. Lawrence. We are going to visit the harbor, island lighthouse, and historic church and take a walk through a bog. Come travel with us! Boats in dry dock near a canal catch your eye when driving by. Moscow Island's main industry is fishing. These are snow crab baskets stacked near the marina. The large chains were very heavy, so most likely for anchors or mooring. The Moscow Point Lighthouse, originally named Birch Point Light, was completed in 1856 and is a Federal Heritage Building and National Historic Site of Canada. It is located at the entrance to Chawlers Bay in the Gulf of St. Lawrence. Built at a cost of 2,200 pounds, it included the lighthouse, watchman's house, and a wood shed. The shed still has an old steel cable wench sitting beside it. The lighthouse is 80 feet tall and has been moved further inland twice due to erosion. From 1856 to 1893, the first lantern was a fixed red light reflecting system. Eight lamps, each with their own parabolic mirror of polished steel, were lit every night by the watchman. The flame was fed by seal oil drawn from a single container. The circle of oil burning lights projected light in all directions. Each morning the watchman would extinguish all eight flames. We stopped at a boardwalk located in a bog on the island. This bog is ombrotropic, meaning it is fed solely by water from precipitation and has no surface runoff or groundwater. The Teramac is native to Canada and is one of the few conifers that lose their leaves or needles in the fall. This young cone is referred to as the fruit of the tree and stays on the branches for two growing seasons. The black spruce is one of the most common trees found in ombrotropic bogs. Because the ground of this type of bog lacks nutrients, it has acidic water and is considered a hostile environment. Wither rod viburnum, or wild raisin, grows freely in the bog. The plant produces clusters of white flowers that become a summer fruit that changes from iridescent pink to red, then becomes blue in late summer before turning black. It is edible and tastes like wild grapes. These white lichens have a plant-like appearance but are actually a combination of fungus and algae. They were growing in abundance in the bog. The boardwalk around a small portion of the bog provided an interesting glimpse at nature. St. John's Church is located on Moscow Point. It was built in 1912 by Clement Dijlova, a local resident who was paid a salary of 60 cents per day for his labor. There were no roads on the road, so he walked to work each day, laboring from dawn to dusk. Electricity has never been installed in the church, and it still uses oil lamps and an oil furnace for light and heat. A minister from Miramac comes to the island to hold services four to five times per year, and 25 people still worship here. A walk on the wharf of the fishing marina offered us some nice water reflections of the ships at dock. There was even one boat with a crew getting ready to go out.
the Ward Warrior boat had a pirate skull on the front that gave it a neat look. Mescal Island Bridge, shown in the background, is 2,000 meters or 6,561 feet and was opened in 1996 to replace a cable ferry. La Terrace a Steve Mescal has a four-star rating and we were told it was the best seafood on the island. We were there during off-season and were only looking for a small lunch, so we both enjoyed lobster sandwiches. It is all freshly caught seafood and the traps were stacked outside. They normally have seating on deck, but in the fall it was cold and we sat inside. We were surprised to find there was no heat in the dining room and everything. Meals, silverware, and coffee were served on paper plates and cups. We stopped at the beach. The shoreline has people walking on it and was covered with lobster cages and seaweed that have washed ashore. Thank you from Paul and I for watching our trip to Moscow Island. Leave us your comments below, give us a big thumbs up, and hit that subscribe button to get notified each time a new video comes out because we want you to travel with us as we go rolling through North America.